God did. The moment changed everything, you know, your whole life, everyone, the whole world seen your name Friday next to Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, DJ Khaled. There's so many questions I have about that song, how it came about and everything, but the first and foremost, man, how does it feel to be on a song with Jay-Z and Lil Wayne, two of the greatest rappers ever? I can't tell you how I feel, bro. Like, it ain't no way to explain this shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy, bro. Like, I just wake up and be like, damn, like, I'm really on a song with Jay-Z. Like, it's people that have been in the industry for 30 years, legends, and they still waiting on like a Jay-Z verse. And that's how I came in. I came in with a Jay-Z verse. You know, it's, just, it's really God, bro. Like, I just be thanking God. Like, I know this guy had a plan for me, bro. And he put it together like a crazy way. Most niggas, they'll be like, he started at the top. People be like, I'm an industry plant. Or he started at the mm. top. Niggas don't know, like, I've really been, like I told you, I've been doing this since eighth grade. So, like, I'm really, like, 10 years in every day. Like, I never missed a day. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like when it was time for God to bless me, yeah. he just did it in, like, a crazy way. <laughs> Yo, 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 it's your boy Hakeem, and you are watching Our Generation Music. And today, man, I have a very, very special one for y'all, my boy Friday. How we doing today, man? Chilling, bro, how are you? Shit, cool, man. You know, sure. very uh, windy and cold LA day, man. Yeah, this shit, it's, it's crazy. Past two days been cold as shit in LA. Raining? Facts. <laughs> Kind of reminds you of like Philly and shit, mm -hmm. and where you're from. Tell us a little bit about you know growing up in Philly and everything. Uh, Philly, like it's a, it's a it's a it's a different place, bro. Like it's not a lot of like love down there, like especially if like you're trying to do some music shit. Mm -hmm. It ain't it ain't too much going down there, so you just gotta stay focused for real, because it's, it's easy to get distracted for sure. Yeah. No. Um distractions, it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, you're Haitian, right? Mm -hmm. And music to like a Haitian family or like a mom and a dad would, is like the ultimate distraction in a sense. It's like, you gotta be a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher. What was it like being, you know, this Haitian kid in Philly trying to chase this, you know, this musical dreams, which obviously I know your parents were like, yo, what are you doing? It's a little different for me because I grew up in a church Oh. So it's like, and I've been singing since I was a kid, playing the keys, bass, guitar, everything. So my, my parents already knew, like, he talented, like, music, like, he chosen. Mm -hmm. Like you said, though, this, like, some, this some other shit, bro. Like, some, this, like, the worst you could, the worst thing you could do. Mm -hmm. They look at this industry like the, the Devil devil's sounds, work. Yeah. No kids, like, the devil's work. So yeah, they ain't never supported for real until I really got like my first check. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and it, it's something like, they don't even think it's real. Yeah. For real, like, not even just Haitians, just growing up in the hood, like you just look at this shit, it's like, there's no way a nigga could make it in this shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. go to school, you know what I mean? But I'll say when I got like my first check, I showed my mom like, look, then she started, you know what I mean? Rocking with me type shit. Yeah, and that usually just like the, the, the money always changes, like being an Islander, like it's like, oh no, you're actually making money from this? Okay, cool, That's I get cool, it, let's support man. this no now. Kizzy. You know, like, and obviously that moment on getting your first check was definitely huge and probably a turning point with them even maybe supporting obviously a lot more. And being in, in that you were in the church and everything, I think one of the craziest things that a lot of the best like producers and artists somewhat always come out of the church. Why is that, you think? Bro, like the church, if you know the church, bro, it's like, especially if like you play music there, mm -hmm. you could literally be in a service for like four hours singing the same two songs. But if you like a musician, you gotta learn how to play that same song like seven different ways. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a soft way to play it. It's a hard way to play it. You know what I mean? So it's like, and then you hear all the parts, the choirs and shit. So when it's time to get in the studio, I hear like 20 different things. Even when you listen to my music, I be doing my own choirs. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't let people do my choirs. I be doing my own shit. It'd be like 40, 
40 meetings, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I go, I position myself in the room, you know what I mean? And just add like 40 vocals for, yeah. that all come from the church for real. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a little bit into your creative process in a little bit. Definitely want to um, stay on topic with just like, you know, being in the church and the early life. Um, was there, you know, you, you played multiple instruments. Mm -hmm. um, did you all, was that all self-taught or was someone early you know, in the church that taught you? My dad, he put me in lessons like at six. Okay. So once he started doing that, I remember it was like a couple of musicians in the church that left type shit. So at one point there wasn't no musicians. And I was just, I was just looking like, let me try. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So one Sunday I just, one Sunday I just tried and I just playing by ear. Like just whatever song you hear, pick it up by ear type shit. Wow. It didn't like, basically any, anything the church needed musically wise, I, I was able to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The drum player wasn't there, I played the drums. The guitar player wasn't there, I played the guitar. So that built me up for real music. Damn. Well, at what point did you, you would say like you realized like, yo, this is for me, this is what I want to do. Music is going to be my future. Probably like when I was a kid, bro, I used to play ball a lot. Like, like before music, I wanted to go to the NBA, bro. No right. I was nice as shit too. How like, nice though? Let's, huh? How nice? No bullshit, know? bro. You could ask niggas, you could ask niggas, bro. And I, I'm gonna ask niggas look. over there, cause niggas is over there. Was he no, nice? He know I be frying this shit out of him. I got footage, he, he nice. Okay. I'm a, look, I'm gonna start showing y'all, like, I really hoop, and I still hoop to this day, like, with D1 players. Oh, word? Like, that crew league shit, they put me in that shit, bro. That it's shit over. Be bad, bro. No bullshit. Hey, uh, we work closely with the crew league and Eli, so definitely gotta get you in there. Like, I, I'm a real life hooper, so. Okay, like so middle school, I was hooping a lot. Like I was like the best in my city. Where? Sure. Like I went to a school called Coldsville. That's like 30 minutes outside of Philly. Mm -hmm. My dad made me go over there. And I was like the best in the city. It was like me, a couple other people. That was when I was like in seventh, eighth grade. When I got to ninth grade, it, it started slowing down. I was still starting getting my buckets, but it started slowing down. And I, and I started peeping like the niggas that was better than me on my team, they wasn't going D1. Mm. I'm like, how y'all not going D1? Y'all going D3 and shit. I'm like, this, not, this might not be the, you know what I mean? This, might, yeah. this dream might be chalk for real. So I would think like, once the basketball starts slowing down, mm -hmm. that was around the time, like I probably recorded my first track around that same time, like eighth, ninth grade. So the realization of like, damn, how you getting, dropping 40, 30 at night, nigga, and you going to fucking community yeah, college. Yeah, go to like, community college, D3 joint, like, you think maybe it was a grade? Well, obviously everything worked out for the best, but maybe you think at the time maybe niggas wasn't studying or some shit. What you mean? <laughs> like you gotta have good grades too to go to. No, 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 niggas' grades was cool. Okay then. They was getting scholarships too, but it just wasn't D one. Damn. So I'm like, that might be over. Like you know what I mean? That might be over for me. Did you did you play with anybody that went to the league or went to a big college? Anything that like that ever happened? No, the niggas in my, my school, they went like D3, D2. It was really cooked. It was nice cooked. shit though, niggas, niggas knew how to hoop. It's real, it was actually really cooked, not one. But is it great one. that, that would, you, you pivoted, right? In that moment, you know, you had the training from being in the church and everything, and then now recording your first song. Did you record yourself in that instance? Because I know to this day, you're doing everything. You're recording, you're producing, you're mixing, you're doing all these things. I'll say like my cousin Marco, he showed me everything. Mm -hmm. Like when I was in eighth, ninth grade, eighth for real. He was like, bro, come to the studio. You know, I'm just thinking of some bullshit. Like in Philly, everybody rap, bro. Like, <laughs> and everybody got a little studio, bro. Like, yeah. you're not gonna come across one nigga that don't got like a song, you know what I mean? So I went over there, I recorded. I'm like, this shit sound good. Like mm -hmm. me and my uh, cousin Leo, it was like a boys to men type song. Mm -hmm. I just went home like, this shit sound crazy though. Like, I was comparing it to Chris Brown shit. It wasn't there yet, but I'm like, you know what I mean? And I was playing it for like a, a females and shit. They're like, you really sound like something, you know what I mean? Cause especially I sing. Yeah. If you look at me like, you think I'm a rapper. So most people like, they wouldn't even expect me to sing. So mm -hmm. when I play it, they be like, nah, this shit sound like the, the real thing. Once I started hearing that, bro, I was locked in every day since like eighth grade. Damn. My cousin Marco, bro, he gave me a laptop. I would take the laptop home, bro. 
you know, like the little headphones with the uh, cords. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You could, you could plug it in the aux. Yeah. Me and my brother French, we used to be in the room every day just recording, like on the regular headphones. Wow. Like make eight songs a week, then bring it back to my cousin Marco's studio and lay them songs down. And he would like mix and, and mix everything. And shit, like, bro, like I probably had like, we probably had like 500 songs by the time I was like in 10th grade. Damn, so what was it, like, you know, you said that you, you had initially played the song for females and they thought it was dope, and then now you're taking the music to your, your cousin's house, he's mixing and he's mastering everything. Did you put this, stif- this stuff out for, like, everyone in the city to hear? It was a little weird, like, because I told you I was hooping a lot. I was never the nigga, like, the singing nigga, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't never, <laughs> no kizzy, like, I ain't never want to be that nigga, like, yo, sing. So a lot of niggas... No bullshit, bro. <laughs> hey, them niggas be the funniest, bro. Yeah, like, like if you be like in a whole like dinner or some shit, and then the, the singing nigga, the nigga be like, yo, singing. You just like, do some hype shit. You be like, hey, bro, like. And I'm not even that type of person. Chill. A lot of niggas don't even hear me sing until you probably come to a show or the studio. Uh huh. So I used to be a real hooper. So a lot of niggas on my team didn't even know I sung. You know what I mean? Like, and until it was like, I think like a girl, she heard my shit because she followed me on Instagram. She heard my shit in like ninth grade. She just kept running around the hallway like, this this Friday type shit. Then everybody started realizing she fucked it up for me. She she exposed she your up. biggest uh, <laughs> secret to the world that changed your whole entire life. No, for sure. <laughs> that's crazy, man. So you you said that she's like, yo, running down the hallway, like that's Friday. So I'm guessing you've it's always had this nickname Friday too? No, nah, she wasn't even saying Friday. Okay. The nickname, my nickname was Franny at that, at that time. Franny. Yeah, How does Franny. Franny turn into Friday? Franny was like a ball name. Like, that's what okay. niggas called me when I was hooping. Like, Franny, nice as shit. Franny be hooping. Friday, I made that name when I was like in ninth, 10th grade. That was around like weekend, party next door. Like, mm-hmm. my favorite artist, you know. I was, in my head, I was signed to OVO, bro. You was? Yeah, in my head, I ain't gonna lie. So I was, I was just saying, like, what's the name I could put together so Drake could see, see a nigga? You know what I mean? The weekend, I just came up with Friday. You literally um, completed like the the whole entire like trilogy. If actually no, if one person was named Saturday, then it would be like a whole thing. Because nah, you have that's Friday. Too much. Fri- you have, Saturday too much. It's too much. Yeah, but if sure. like, because you got Friday right, then you got a party next door. Then you got the week. The whole then you got weekend. the weekend. Then you go right back to Monday. Like, then you go right back it. to Monday. I don't know if we want to listen to Monday. Nah, <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> but man, that's amazing fire. Um, I seen party like two nights ago. You did? I ran up on him like, bro, I made my name off you, bro. Nigga didn't even know who I was. He like, who you? I'm Friday. He like, oh, you Friday. But I ran up <laughs> on him like a fan, bro. Like, uh-huh. I made my name after you, bro. Like, I'm just te- you just talking to him, bro. Nigga like, who you though? I'm like, I'm Friday. I'm Friday. Like, oh, I know you. Yeah, I'm definitely showing seen love, bro. I just be showing love, bro. Like, I ain't scared to show love. Like, I- nah, you should never get rid of that. I think that's one thing that you know, jades people and like, it'll kind of like cloud their heads. Like you should always be a fan, no matter what. You look at someone like Tyler, the creator, bro, he's still like, at the height he is, he's still literally the biggest fan of music. Like, nah, or Travis, sure. like you still see them fan out about um, Kid Cudi or someone else, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like people that inspired them, like you should never get rid of that. I hate when people like start getting too cool for shit. Cause it's just like, like I don't want to be too cool. Like I was just telling my cousin this, some I really some niggas I really just want to stay a fan. Mm-hmm. Like certain niggas, like they were like, let's work. But I don't want to go there with you right now. Like I don't want to meet you on that. How about that? Fuck up the whole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like how about if we don't click? Now I look at you a little different. I just some people I really just want to stay fans, bro. Instead of like trying to build. Has there people. been a session that you didn't go that go to because you you wanted to keep that you know? vision of them, you being a fan to them? No, I'm gonna pull up to every session. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's certain shit I wouldn't, I wouldn't like be on some hype shit. Like, mm-hmm. less, like it's certain niggas I can work with right now easily. Mm-hmm. But I just be like, I just wanna play the distance and still be your biggest fan, bro. Like I don't wanna, okay. you know what I mean? That's how, I don't know. I feel it's a that. weird way to look at it. At what moment, cause obviously it's like this crazy jump, right? Did you? You know, you're now, you know, you're working with some of the biggest people in industry. What was the initial reaction like when you started putting music out in your city? Like were people gravitating to it? And at what point was that? Yeah. 
Nobody was grabbing it. Like, I was putting it out, but like, it never really went nowhere. Like, you know what I mean? And I didn't have like the budget. I didn't have the, I had the music, mm -hmm. but I didn't have nothing else. Yeah. Like, I'll just drop a song, then it just stop. Get a thousand plays and stop. Drop another song, a thousand plays. So at one point, bro, I just stopped dropping music. I told my brothers, I was like, bro, until I get the, the back end that I need, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna drop. But in the city of Philly, though, a lot of niggas knew me like for production. Cause like my cousin Marco, like every rapper come to me, like on some like, he, he an engineer. So like I used to be in there a lot, engineering people and producing people. Mm. So your cousin- So Marco. niggas know me on that tip more mm -hmm. than singing, for real, for real. So your cousin, like if he's had a session or something, he would make sure your beats get played. Yeah, or if he wasn't for sure, there. for sure. He would make sure my beats get played. Even if he wasn't there sometimes, I'll, I'll take over for him a lot. That's fire, man. Sure. Um, God did. The moment changed everything, you know? Your whole life, everyone, the whole world seen your name Friday next to Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, DJ Khaled. There's so many questions I have about that song, how it came about and everything, but the first and foremost, man, how does it feel to be on a song with Jay-Z and Lil Wayne, two of the greatest rappers ever? I can't tell you how I feel, bro. Like, it ain't no way to explain this shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy, bro. Like, I just wake up and be like, damn, like, I'm really on a song with Jay-Z. Like, it's people that have been in the industry for 30 years, legends, and they still waiting on like a Jay-Z verse. And that's how I came in. I came in with a Jay-Z verse. You know, it's, just, it's really God, bro. Like, I just be thanking God, like I know this, God had a plan for me, bro. And he put it together like a crazy way. Most niggas, they'll be like, he started at the top. People be like, I'm an industry plant. Or he started at the mm. top. Niggas don't know, like I've really been, like I told you, I've been doing this since eighth grade. So like, I'm really like 10 years in every day. Like I never missed a day. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like when it was time for God to bless me, yeah. he just did it in like a crazy way, bro. Like, that's how I feel, but. That's crazy, man. And, you know, I think people would really like to know just how did you link up with DJ Khaled? How did that record even come about, you know? Man, it, it was really all faith. Like, like, you know, Khaled, he was on Instagram like for like four months saying God did. Mm -hmm. So I'm really going off that. Like, I'm like, let me make a song called God did and see if I can get it to Khaled. Wow. That's just how I looked at it. I didn't even have no access to this nigga. Like, I was just thinking like that, me and my manager. Wow. Once I made the song, bro, I was like, this, this the one, bro. Like, I was in my room all day just listening to it, bro. Like, the choirs, the melodies. I'm like, there's no way. If he hear this, it's for sure going on the album, you know? So, I remember I called my A&R, and I played it for my A&R, Eddie. He connected to Khaled. You know, Eddie, uh, he married Jay Bly's manager. Mm -hmm. So he got Khaled direct. Once he heard it, he like, I'm about to send it to him right now. And Khaled hit us like the next day, like, this might be a movie. That's how, that's how Khaled heard it. So take us from the rest of the process with that, cause you know, it gets to Khaled that next day and everything and he listens to it and he's saying it's a movie. Cause obviously those verses had to like, have come into time. Were you being updated while the song was being, you know, created to fruition? It's crazy because the way, like, when he said this about to be a movie, we started paperwork. And the mm. paperwork, it was supposed to be my song only, no Jay-Z, no nothing. It was supposed to be like Friday interlude, God did, just me. So we were doing the paperwork. Khaled probably hit us like the next week. It was like, this shit gonna live forever. Like, I just put three rappers on there, mm. some shit, and a singer. Once he told me that, bro, I'm thinking, you know, you already know, like, yeah. I'm thinking Kanye, I'm thinking Jay-Z. You I'm already think, thinking? Yeah, I'm thinking Nas. Cause you know, that's a high level song. You're not about to just yeah. throw any, you know what I mean? So then I was hearing little rumors in the industry, like Jay-Z just did a five minute verse. Niggas telling me, bro, I think Jay-Z hopped on your joint, bro. So I found out like three days before the song came out. Mm -hmm. It was Jay-Z, Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, and John Legend. Once I heard John Legend, 
I'm like, damn, they probably got me doing like a few backgrounds and shit. You know, that's they took you out the song. That's the goat. They took. I'm, I'm thinking they took me out. Mm -hmm. That's a nigga I look up to. Like I grew up listening to John Legend. Bro, I didn't hear the song until it came out, bro. I never heard the song. When 12 a.m. hit, bro, I hit my phone game. I heard my voice coming the first line, bro. I was going crazy around the crib, bro. Wow, that must have been a crazy emotional moment for you. I was crying, bro. Like, me and my mom, my brother, bro, just going crazy in the crib. Like, what the fuck? I can't tell you how I felt, bro. Uh, shit, like it all it played off, man. It, it really crazy. did. The thing is, I didn't talk to Khaled like through that whole process. Mm -hmm. Like, I never talked to Khaled. I remember my cousin came to the crib and was like, yo, we out, we gotta celebrate. Thing is, when the song came out, bro, I didn't have a dollar in my pocket. Advance my, ain't hit yet. <laughs> nothing hit yet. I didn't have no label offers, nothing. Wow. So my cousin came to the crib like, yo, we out. I told the nigga, bro, I'm, I'm, I don't got no bread, bro. Like, I ain't trying to celebrate. We good. <laughs> nigga like, bro, I got you, bro. We at the don't club. Don't even trip, cuz. Yeah, he like, don't trip. I got you. We at the club. We pull up to the club, right? I get a DM from Khaled. Like, what's your number? The night the, night the song came out. Mm -hmm. I sent Khaled my number. 30 minutes in the club. I got like a, a phone call. I already knew. I'm in the section, bro. Like, I already know. I called, told my cousin, we out. It's Khaled. It's first time I told the Khaled. He like, oh, thank you, bro. I'm telling him thank you. He telling me thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you gave me the, you gave me the, the song of my album. You know the what I mean? The glue. Yeah. Like, and I'm telling him, bro, you. You about to change my life. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I remember I told that nigga, I'm like, bro, I'm running, I'm walking around Philly and shit. Nobody even know who I am. Like they talking about Friday, but they don't know Friday. Yeah. That nigga just like, bro, they about to know soon, like real soon. Like a new star is born. That was the first time I talked to Khaled. That's an amazing story, man. Um, and it's 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 crazy because one of the things I took from it was the, the pre-planning to that. Like you just see hearing Khaled, God did, God did, and Every you're day. like, yo, let me, not knowing that I have no connection to this man, let me just make a song like this and mm -hmm. it's it's gonna happen. Right. There's so much faith with you. It's a lot of faith. And it's just not faith, it's hard work. Yeah. Like, I'm in my room making music 12 hours a day. So it's like, it ain't nothing for me to make a song just to see. Let's just see. I, it probably could change my life, so let's just see if I do it. And it and it definitely did. Sure. I gotta ask you the most probably controversial question, and and I think everyone the night the song came out was asking the same question: Who had the better verse, Jay Z or Wayne? To you? Shit, I can't tell you, bro. <laughs> I feel like all of them did their own thing. Okay. Like what needed to be done. You know what I mean? Like. I can't pick, like Ross came with the energy. Mm -hmm. Wayne came, you know what I mean? And Jay, yeah. just, Jay just finished it. So it's just like, they all did their thing for me. I'm not gonna lie, for me personally, yeah, that whole verse was, that was it. Nah, that was sure. that was the one, I'm not gonna lie. That mm -hmm. was it for me, Hove did his thing. A five minute Hove verse, out the blue, come on. Nah, Niggas sure. in the crib going crazy, like what the fuck? I wish they gave Wayne a couple more minutes though, like. Hey. That would have been nice too. It would have been like, okay, you could have really measured up the sparring, but you know, Jay Z did his thing. Hats off to him. Um, moving on, one of the things I noticed about you, and you know, I think you're really committed to your development as an artist right. because I see you on TikTok actually actively using it. Mm -hmm. Where you know now a lot of artists they kind of like they shy away, they think TikTok might be corny or this and that, but it's changing everyone's lives. Oh, and it's like, sure. I don't know what's not registering in a lot of artists' head, like, bro, get on TikTok. Fix. Like, I know I get it. Also, TikTok is part of a larger problem that we are having, you know, with things blowing up super fast and this and that, but like, we gotta figure out a way to like, actually like, you know, make some type of structure around it. Like, yeah. but if y'all not trying, we're never gonna get to that point. Facts. You know what I mean? So it's like, get on TikTok and then we can figure out, cause if you guys keep, if we keep fighting this thing, like it, no one's gonna get anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I do love that you are on there and you're actively like making TikToks, whether it's in your studio, you cooking up or you linking an artist or mm -hmm. you showing that an artist hopped on your song. Why is it so important for you to, you know, be on TikTok and see, you know, you even seeing the, the value in it? 
it's just like, I'm not gonna lie, at first, I wasn't on TikTok, mm -hmm. but it's like, now the people, they want, they want to see me, like, they want to hear me. Yeah. So, like, once that, I seen, like, the people want to hear more, hear music, hear more snippets, why not give it? And you don't got to be doing corny shit on there, like, I wouldn't say corny shit, but, like, you don't got to be dancing on there, like, every day, you just saying something, you know what I mean? Like, show, show what you're working on in the studio type shit. For sure. Yeah. And another amazing moment and big moment, and you're just, this whole year for you is just big moments after big moments is Lil Baby. You're on Lil Baby's album. Mm -hmm. um, you're on the song Forever. Uh, debuted number eight on a Hot 100 chart. Um, how did that come about and how did you know you link up with Lil Baby? Most, most people know like the, the Baby song, that was me and Vori's song first. Okay. Yeah, like me, Vori put it on his Instagram. That was just me and Vori. And I don't know how like, like Lil Baby heard it. He heard it and was like, yo, who's singing on the hook? I need that. So I guess Vori sent him the hook and then Baby just added his verses. Yeah. Shout out Vori too. Yeah, I seen that you even thanked him on there, you know, for. Yeah, for sure. I didn't know what the thank you was, but now we know that yeah, Vori, you know, sure. set the you play set up, up and everything. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's fire. And then obviously that's another one for you being on one of the other biggest rap yeah. albums of the year. Like, and then it doesn't stop there. Chris Brown, legend, you know, yeah. earlier you were talking about, you know, you playing the music for a girl and she was, you know, comparing it to Chris Brown, like mm -hmm. as it's on that level. And then, you know, full circle moment, you got us two songs on his album, album produced, wrote, they were even older song. You did the song um, Wheels. Yeah, the song Wheels Fall Off with Chris Brown, Lil Durk, and Kapala Gray. You know, you wrote and produced on that, and you were also on the Bryson Tiller song. Uh, um, how did that all come about? It's crazy, because me and my manager, we knew somebody that would be hooping with Chris Brown. My man Rico. Mm -hmm. Rico, he connected to Rockstar. Rockstar did like seven songs on Chris Brown's album, so. Chris Brown and Rockstar already locked in. So when Rockstar heard my version of Will's Fall Off, he just automatically sent it to Chris. You know what I mean? The thing is, Chris' album was already done. Like, you know what I mean? Turned in. Mm -hmm. I think as soon as Chris heard the Marcus, bro, I think he recorded like the same night or the next day. Like a week before his album even dropped, bro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, that was a shock to me just knowing that a nigga I looked up to heard my shit and wanted to, you know what I mean? Just yeah. throw it on his album that fast. Like, I know he felt the vibe. That was like the first time the world heard me too, because Chris Brown left like a lot of my backgrounds in, in the song. Yeah. So a lot of people were like, who this voice in this song? You know what I mean? And that was like the first time people was like, nah, this Friday singing in the back, for sure. Damn, that's a, that's a crazy moment. It's funny because eventually you and Chris Brown are going to get the hoop together. Because he's a sure. avid hooper. Yeah, he a real hooper, though. Yeah, I, I hooped uh, one time, went to his house to hoop, too. And I, listen, man, the rumors are true. The videos are true. There ain't no stunt he's double. Chris that. Brown, really nice like that. Yeah, he <laughs> that really nigga hooped. can hoop. Nah, he really. It's certain niggas you just look at, he's he a real hooper. Chris nigga Brown really is nice, that. bro. Nigga was out there dropping buckets, buckets, buckets. I'm like, damn, all right. I don't see it in person. This is crazy. Um, we got to talk about the project, man. Um, Lost in Melody. You know, I, I love the title for it. What was the, you know, how did you come up with the, the title and everything with Lost in Melody? And like, I always knew, like, I wanted to put, like, something with melody in it. I just mm -hmm. didn't know what. Then like my, I think like me and my manager came up with Lost in Melody. When that came out, it just, it made sense. Cause like, even like when you listen to my project, a lot of people be telling me, it's like, you feel like you're somewhere else. Like mm -hmm. you're not here. Like you just going to another space for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even while I'm like creating a project, it really be like, I'm lost. Like if you see like my creative process, yeah, it don't really make sense. It's just, Everything I do is being led by the, the melody for real. Mm -hmm. Like, I lay my melodies down, and I just come up with the words. Yeah. So that's how I came up with, like, Lost the Melody, for sure. We're going to uh, tap into the creative, your creative process and how you created about it, but I do want to just start this out with, like, the first opening lines on that project. <laughs> I'm not where I want to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be mm -hmm. on the song Blessings. For sure. 
That was some shit, bro. That's how I wanted to come in, too. Them first lines mean a lot to me. Even if you listen to my, all my music, them first. All of them, yeah. yeah and I was chasing my dreams on an empty stomach. Yep. You know what I mean? It's just, and I, I, that's just how I wanted to open up my shit. Like, I'm not where I want to be. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes in life we'll get caught up thinking, it, like, we not where we supposed to be. But mm -hmm. if you really look back, you really forget, like, you really came a long way, bro. Like, you really, you blessed for real. Yeah. And not only, like, you came a long way, it's people that are doing worse. You know what I mean? That wish they was in your shoes. Mm -hmm. So that song just about, like, appreciating what you got for real. For nah, sure. it's, 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 it was, it's very, so very poetic because it's just like, you know, you're, you're thankful and also you're just looking back, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yo, but you're frustrated too. Like, nigga, like, I gotta go get it. Like, mm -hmm, sure. I'm not comfortable here. Like, there's so much more for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And the other thing about the project is you do have a song with you and Vori. There's seven tracks on it. Um, you know, what was it like? What was the creative process like with that project? How did you go about, you know, crafting those seven songs? Man, like, to it, like empty stomach and don't give up on me. Like I did like in 2019, mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to drop them, but I just didn't have like what I needed to drop it. So I saved them. Then I built it off them too. Like then I added God sent. I recently did God sent with Vori. I added blessings. I added mama. The creative process, it was like, it was real natural. Like in my music, I just want you to feel me. You know what yeah. I mean? I just, it's a lot of things you could write about. Like back then I used to make songs about girls like only. Like I didn't know how to put what I wanted to say in mm -hmm. a song. And I just learned that like two years ago for real. So I just, this project, I just wanted to like make you feel me. Like whatever you're going through, you could get it out for real. Like. Yeah. What was the record? Did you record all this by yourself? Yeah, I, you seen the room yeah. I made God did? Mm -hmm. I made everything there. In that room? For sure. The whole Jeez, project man. made a little baby. God did everything there. So like, I, I, I usually start on the keyboard, how you see me just vibing. Mm -hmm. Then I just get the words, I just add my choirs, always God. It's crazy, that the energy in that room is insane. Like what's going on? Just like oil in there or some shit. <laughs> no, it's, it's something special in there. Like it's, it's, it's a different energy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause my mom right next door. So it's like, it's, a, it's really coming from a raw place. Yeah. Like, I can't explain it, bro. Like, I mean, I'm hearing sure. my mom pray all day, mm -hmm. just asking God, like, yes. turn things around. Like, yeah. then I just go right in my room, just, it's like coming from a raw place, bro. Like, yeah. I can't explain it, bro. It's like God in the room with me. Like, I don't write none of this. It's just, it's just flowing through, right out for sure. Through him. Mm -hmm. um, on the project, too, um, the first couple songs Blessings, Empty Sun, God Sent. And don't give up on me. It all kind of like <clears throat> has the same similar vibe where it's like, I get this like, obviously now knowing about the church stuff, mm -hmm. this church or like this tribal African type of, you know, like a uh, spiritual vibe from it. Yeah. And then you go into the know, uh, know the truth and come through and they're like super undertone R&B records. I feel like yeah, the EP sure. changed, it just right, changed there. right there. Like I was just telling my folks that like, it don't really make sense musically. I could have just kept it at blessings, empty stomach, God sent, don't give up on me, and mama. Mm -hmm. That could have been a nice ass five little joint. But I just wanted to, I wanted to throw who I am in there, like the whole part of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like come through and know the truth. I just wanted y'all to know who I am. Like I'm still a nigga. Like I, you know what I mean? So it's we like. We still like girls. Yeah, for <laughs> we sure. We still like the bitches. <laughs> for sure. And so not only that, I ain't want to hear shit later. Like, yo, this nigga trying to do club records now. Like. He mm. should stick to uh. So I just wanted to give y'all everything I do. Yeah. Like everything who I am, like how I talk to females, how I talk in general. I just wanted to put it all in one so y'all could get like, oh, we know this nigga. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I thought it was very needed too in the project from just hearing everything. I was like, oh, okay, this is, oh, this is fire, this is fire. And then you get to the, and then even just the, the melody, the, it was like a kind of had a reverse uh, effect, like kind of um, on Know the Truth. Know and the I truth. was like, I was like, it, it very, early Bryson mm -hmm. gave me like vibes from him like that. I'm sure that's, I know you guys had linked up. I'm sure that's probably one of his favorite records or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really enjoyed the project, man. And, you know, I think 
you are this year you're just on track to just doing greater and greater things and you've been collaborating with you know you've already been you you worked with Wiz um you just recently worked with G Herbo did some yeah, stuff yeah, with I'm, him I'm producing for a lot like I'm all over bro like I'm putting the work in man I just 10 years from now I just want to look back and when you look at my name it's just like history yeah. you know what I mean like I'm, I did something on G Herbo album I got some shit coming up with Rod Wave Lil TJ like that stuff in the, on a, coming like in the next two weeks. You know, I'm just producing for everybody, writing for a lot of people. So. Wow. For sure. I, and these all legends. Legends, Today, but like, do you hear a little T? You just said some wave? shit, bro. It's crazy because I was listening to this project and I looked at my man Chidi. We were both listening. And I was like, bro, would this nigga get together with Rod Wave? It is fucking over. Nah, we need we need that we need that feature for sure. I that just, is I, just produce, be shit. I just produced something on his drink. I, but I, I feel like in any capacity, just like you guys working together is going to be crazy because your production is still identical, you know, to mm, who your I sound and who you are. Sure. But yeah. that would be amazing, too, to hear both of y'all vocally on a track. And also, too, I think Burner Boy. No, we got to make that. That would be crazy to hear you and Burner Boy together. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite artists. Really? Burner Boy, like, for sure. Why is that? Why would you say that? I just feel him. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm Haitian, so... You in Caribbean music? Yeah, it's not really about what you're saying. It's about like, the can feel. you make me feel something? Yeah, it's a feeling. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, even an empty stomach where you, it's a part you hear me crying a little bit. It's just like, like, that's just how Caribbean music is, bro. Like when you listen to a Haitian artist, you listen to mm -hmm. uh, an African Jamaican artist. You don't care about what they saying, bro. They just make you feel something, bro. Yeah, like, it's all in the rhythm and the vibe. Yeah, man. for sure. There's this photo I seen of you holding your piano backstage with many different people and he even talked about it on a song on the pro ep he's like nigga you they, they didn't even hear my song yet and they just keep telling me to grind like grind. nigga like what <laughs> the fuck out my face listen to me <laughs> and that photo to me is just like the perfect image of that because like you're literally having a piano like bro notice me like i make music yeah i make music beyond just giving someone like a uh usb or a cd yeah. like hey i'll come in here and cook some shit up right, right now. now tell us like the you know the idea behind that that was like the first time i went to la me and my brothers me french and leo mm -hmm. so it was like we was broke we just grabbed the apartment for like one month paid like one or two months and just see like let's see what could happen you know what i mean so while that period, we was, we was fucked up out there, like ear mattress, peanut butter jelly in it. Nigga, I added the peanut, niggas be like, yo, why, why uh, bread and jelly? I had peanut butter in there too. <laughs> I just ain't know how to put it in the line, bro. That bullshit. <laughs> it would have sounded weird, bro, so I just said bread and jelly. But that whole song is about when me and my brothers left Philly and went to LA, and we was fucked up in LA for like four or five months mm -hmm. behind rent. But we was still like, I think my brother French, he was like, Bro, he was already getting backstage. Yeah. So he just told me, like, bro, like, bring your keyboard and act like you're a part of the band. Mmm. Niggas, niggas can't tell you shit if you do that. Who the hell walking around this there with a big ass keyboard? keyboard. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> he so, definitely yeah, a part of Yeah, when he told me that, bro, we was in every concert, bro. Damn. Backstage. I'm like, I play I play for the band. Like, let him let him let him through. Like VIP. So when I was back there, bro, like I was trying to get my music out. Niggas wasn't, you know what I mean? I don't take it personal because I know these niggas, like they get probably a thousand people that run up on them all day. Mm -hmm. But that shit was hurting my heart though, like, you know what I mean? So that was like how I made Empty Stomach, for real. Yeah, no, that's a beautiful story. That picture stands out to me crazy because, and you know, it is typical and you shouldn't take anything personal. It is typical though for like someone that is more successful or artists to tell you like just keep grinding. Yeah, keep but grinding. as cliche as it sounds, that's what you did. That's what I did. You know, you did just yeah, keep grinding. It made me go harder too. I yeah. ain't gonna lie, like it made me go harder that trip. When I went back to Philly, I just locked back in even two times harder and just locked in. I do want to just you know sound wise, right, with your music. You know, you did say earlier a little bit about just like stacking like forty vocals and this and that. What is like? The make the process of like you making a record, like what does that look like from the writing to you know the engineering to even making the beat because you do produce. Yeah. What's the what's your like recipe? You would say. Uh, I mainly like I always start on the piano. Mm -hmm. I just be flowing on the keys, 
And it's, it's usually like the first line, whatever, like that first melody I come with, I could build off this, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I, I lay the keys down and then I lay the melody down. Like I, that's why I, like, I love melody, melody. So I'll do a whole song with just mel melodies, no words. Mm -hmm. The song already finished, I already laid the melody down, like me humming. Then I just add the words, I be freestyling the words, you know what I mean? Then I just add my choirs, bro. Just, I can't finish a song without adding backgrounds, you know what I mean? Cause I grew up in the church, you know what I mean? I grew up listening to Boys and Men, bro. Mm -hmm. Five part harmonies, you know what I mean? So I just be going crazy, bro. Like it'd be certain points, like I'll position myself in my room. I'll go in the back to record. I'll go in the front just so you can get that choir feel, you know, that, yeah. that 15 people, you know what I mean? That's amazing, man. Yeah, it's like, Every time I listen to your shit and this and that, it just feels like I'm definitely could be taken back to church. Like my mom's like, oh, you already listened to the music. Might as well take you to church. No, for sure. <laughs> um, well, we usually uh, do this to close it out and everything. What is your message for our generation? Man, I'll just say whatever you want to do, you could do it. Don't let nobody stop you. Like when I was chasing this music shit, there's a lot of people that tried try to tell you what to do because mm -hmm. they never did it. You can't listen to somebody that that never did nothing. Yeah. Try to tell you what you can't do. You know what I mean? Just dream for the highest, bro. Like, I'll just say that for sure. You can do whatever you want. My boy, I appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you, gang. Thank you.